Hi there YouTube, um, as you can see the subframe for the truck is now complete, a uh, few little things to do but largely complete, um, and that's what this episode's all about, it's about building the, uh, the um, this subframe, obviously I'm at the end of the episode now but I'm going to go back to the, the start and start from uh, the bare thing, so you know, why, why do this, uh, the question Basically, all all trucks have some torsional twist in the chassis. So the chassis rails go down here, they're parallel, they're pop riveted together or bolted together usually, um, very rarely welded. Now the reason for that is that truck chassis will always twist, um, and when you're carrying a load of pallets or a normal shipping container or a load of timber or whatever, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if if the, if the, if the, if the tray is twisting. Um, it won't. Nothing. Will, nothing's there to break. But if you've got a habitation pod with drawers and and um, doors and everything in, it and you start twisting it, nothing's going to go close. <laughs> Your drawers aren't going to open. Plus, there's all the fatiguing inside it as well. So you just wear it out quicker. So we have to have some way to allow the chassis to twist because we want it to twist because it gives us better off-road capabilities if we if our wheels can sort of you know twist over irregularities in the uh, in the surface with um, without using the springs it gives us extra extra travel um, in our suspension or in the truck's ability uh, so we want to keep that so this is a rigid truck it has nine and a half mil steel rails so it's very rigid and in the last episode you know I showed you lifting it up with a forklift and how I got I got twist out of it and that's going to be there um, so I want to keep that but I don't want it to transfer through into the uh, um, into the pod so I, the way we do that is by putting a three-point connection on the uh, on the on the chassis so we've got the two front points uh, fixed solid and the rear is a big uh, 50 mil um, uh, machine steel pin and 50 mil you know that's overkill the um, the knuckle on a uh, on a semi trailer trailer is uh, is 50 mil and if you have say three trailers stacked up behind you that could be 50 tons so this is two and a half three tons so way overkill um, some other trucks like the Mans you quite often see where the the cab's going one way and the uh, the pod is going another way, they're very live, same as the Unimogs, there's a lot of twist in those and you have to keep it out, so quite often they'll have a connection like this at the rear, also one at the front, and in the middle they connect it with a couple of sort of grab pipes around tubes, so it gives it a very, uh, because they, they twist so much. Um, I didn't really have to do this, another way to do it would be with um, tension springs or compression springs, Compression springs, yep, uh, and that was developed in the um, in the fuel transport industry uh, for aluminium tankers. The, the tankers were f with the twist; they were fatiguing and they were getting failures. <laughs> you can't afford to have failures in a in a fuel tankers. So what they did was they still built them out of alum aluminium because it, uh, it was economic to do so. But then they put these uh, springs down the side so the chassis could sort of twist underneath it and pull the springs out and it would all be good. Um, but I've gone with this method. Um, now, so generally what I'm doing here is I'm building it big and heavy. I'm building a big strong truck to, to run over those long, you know, dirt outback roads we had in Northern Australia. You get similar roads in South America and, and Alaska. Um, top of Canada you get these sorts of roads uh, and the transport industry equipment you know, runs on them with no problem at all it, they are, you know, prime mover with three trailers running continuously up and down you know, corrugated gravel roads really doesn't show a lot of signs of wear they can go for a million kilometres and the trails can you know who knows how long how far the trailers end up um, uh, operating for you put a land cruiser and a caravan up and down those roads and you go you know, a couple of thousand kilometres at any sort of speed and you've wrecked them. But, you know, they're, they're dead. Uh, you know, the, 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 the land cruiser will be just totally worn out. The caravan probably is not behind your car anymore. It's probably in pieces back down the road. So they're just not built 
to do that sort of work where with the big wheels and the big strong heavy um, steel work these are that's why that's why I've sort of built it like this. Fabricate the swing arm now. I'm just cleaning it up. Um, now we go under the back, the back of the uh, pod, which is there. So um, a lot of work though. It's very, you know, when you're in time spent actually welding up, it's not very much at all compared to all the fabricating, the grinding, and the setting out. And the trouble with the welding is you've got to do it fairly slowly so you know and think about things so you don't warp steel or steel warps fairly easy under heat so you can stuff the whole project by um, rushing into the welding. So I've got the um Profiles cut, it's plasma cut, quite good cut too. It's nice and uh, um, square. Apparently, they're a tiny little bit out of square, but for welding purposes, not a problem. But I've discovered this new method I'm mucking around. One of the big problems with, um, with uh, rolled steel is the mill scale. I'm getting the mill scale off, and you can spend half your time just trying to get this mill scale off the steel so you can paint it. If you don't get it off then it just rusts and the paint comes off. Um, I've got this piece here I've done with a grinder uh, or one of these you know, just abrasive wheels um, and you know it's okay I guess. Um, but I've got this, this new method and it's just as you can see it's just you couldn't get more perfect than that. So what it is, is it's, uh, this world's wearing down a bit, it's we'll probably get an hour and a half out of each one of these wheels, and um, it's sort of a matrixy looking thing, um, flexi strip, stripping disc from our flex of it, and, uh, but I think the other part of this also put some um, calcium and scale and rust remover on there first um, to loosen it up doesn't actually bring it off but I'm pretty sure I tested another piece and I stripped across from where this had this stuff on it and um, to where it hadn't and it was much much easier to strip off so that's a big step forward that's a beautiful finish you know <laughs> uh, it's going to make things easier part of the one of the little tricks with welding is that you've got to have you know clean stock um, get rid of all the impurities and you find welding is, is considerably easier um, and that goes for old old metal as well you know old metal absorb, absorbs different things carbon and stuff and um, it's always difficult to weld um, but if you can strip the surface off and have a nice smooth surface with no dags and no tanning up bits um, it makes the welding a whole lot easier
this is the truck box off the uh, off the truck originally, but I've dropped it down. I've sort of got an idea I might put the ladder to the um, access the uh, the pod on top of it, and in the box I'll carry all the recovery gear and the jack. And uh, this has got a um, compressed air hose. And so this is the rear mount with the uh, uh, single point attachment. I've got it heavily bolted onto the chassis and. Uh, uh, the big arm going across there with the um, twist locks at the end. Also you see those um, bolts sticking through, that's for the, the water tanks that hang underneath that and uh, over there as well.